Welcome to the New Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church podcast. This is the official podcast of New Mount Calvary, where we bring you inspiring sermons, in-depth Bible studies, and meaningful conversations with our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Sanja R. Dawson. Whether you're at home, in the car, or on the go, we're here to help you grow in your faith and connect deeper with God's word. So grab your Bible, open your heart, and let's dive in together. So Psalm 91, we're going to look at verses 13 through 16. I'm at the end of the text uh, because we'll be, that's where we are. So for those of you who, you can watch the other ones because we're at the end. Amen. (laughs) All right. uh, NIV, let's see. It says, you will tread or walk upon the lion and the cobra. That's why that song was so appropriate. The young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him. And let him see. With his own eyes. Let him see my salvation. It's a promise to David, but I, to the writer, I should say, but I receive it for myself. It's a promise from God that I receive for myself. Long life, I will satisfy him. And let him see, hallelujah, my salvation. You take your seats. I'm going to talk about victory in your view. Victory in your view. Victory in your view. They just ministered to a song that said that God fights for us. And a lot of times we have to be reminded that we are not fighting these battles by ourselves. Because the enemy will make you think that you are all out here by yourself. But you are not alone because God fights for you. You have victory in your view. This particular psalm is one of the most quoted psalms in the Bible. As I shared in the teaching over the last few weeks, Psalm 91, whether it was written by Moses or David, because they're not really sure which one wrote it, the writer writes this beautiful poem about protection. I should say song, rather, in the hymnal of the Psalter about protection. And he teaches us that we are, can be protected no matter where we go. In this day and age where you can feel vulnerable, this day and age where you can feel exposed, isn't it good to know that you're protected? So you may not go out of here with anything else but that. <laughs> and I will have already preached. Because there's somebody in here that feels a little bit like, like, you, like you're not necessarily protected from things that you are going through right now. Perhaps it's a sickness that you're dealing with. The doctor doesn't have an answer for you. But God knows and God sees And you're still protected. You are covered by God. Just to know that gives us an assurance. So much so that this particular psalm was used to be um, the soldiers in military. When they would go into battle, they had a copy of Psalm 91 in their uniform. To remind them of its beautiful words that say, I will say of the Lord in verse 2, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you. You're covered. I know you got all state, and I know you got State Farm, and I know you got all these other people, but isn't it good to know that you've got Jesus? (laughs) You're covered. He says, with his, he says, 
Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Verse 4, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. And he shall not be afraid. No fear of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction. That means when things are going crazy all around you, everywhere you turn, you don't have to have any fear because you're covered. See, somebody came to church this morning just because you needed to hear that one thing, that you, my brother and my sister, are covered. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near you. And only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee that you can keep you in all of your ways. His angels are watching all night and all day. The angels keep watching over me. Oh, I wish I had some people in here that remember those songs. And when they sang them, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what those songs meant. I said, why are those deacons up there talking about the angels? Man, but if you get in enough car accidents, if you get enough calls from the doctor's office, if you go down to the cemetery enough times, you will understand that there are angels that are watching over us. It could have been me. It could have been you. It could have been your loved one. It could have been your friends. It could have been your house that caught on fire. Nobody and nothing but the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting happy. I'm getting happy because it's a reminder that storms may rise and winds may blow. But can anybody say with me, thank God I'm covered. Can you tell the neighbor next to you if they're not too mad at you, thank God I'm covered. Okay, can you tell the other neighbor, the one that hasn't even said hello yet today, can you tell them, thank God, I'm covered. Hallelujah. Man, that, that wasn't even in my notes. That wasn't even in my text. That, God just gave that to me to tell somebody that might be going into surgery, thank God, I'm covered. Hallelujah. There are three principles from this text that I want to lift up as we have laid the foundation that we are protected. We who are believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, we who are saved by his power divine, we are the ones who are protected. In the text, it teaches us, first of all, that we have authority over the enemy. I want you to, to get this. We have authority over the enemy. Reverend Thomas preached earlier this month where he talked about my name is victory. He was not saying that so that we could puff ourselves up. Because our victory comes through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse 13 says you will walk on the lion and the cobra. The psalmist is very clear here that we will tread upon lions and cobras. The young lion and the serpent, you will trample down. So I begin to ask the question, why did he choose animals like lions and cobras for this illustration? Well, if you understand the animal kingdom, the lion and the cobra are two of the fiercest animals in the kingdom. The lion here represents open and violent enemies. And the cobra represents all secret and malicious enemies. Even more, when a lion is young, 
That's when it is at the height of its strength, and the serpent is the deadliest form of the snake. So why, why does the psalmist use these particular animals? Because they represent the, the, the strongest, they represent the most violent, they represent the ones that are most sneaky and malicious, and even over them, you will walk and you will trample because you have authority. What I love about God is he says that they're protected over the enemies that you see coming and the ones that you don't. Danger seen and unseen. He has given us dominion and power over all enemies. That's why the psalmist reminds us that we have victory even before the enemy shows up. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon. Do we have that one? No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. That's the key. You guys are saying the King James. And it says, and, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. Do you know any judgy people? Any critical people? It says, this is the heritage, the inheritance, or the benefit of the servants of the Lord. So what's the qualification? Are you a servant of the Lord? Do you love him? Do you trust him? Well, here's your benefit package. Says, and this is their vindication from me that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Weapons will be formed and they're formed all day long. Weapons will be formed and they're formed all day long. Liar's going to be a liar and a cheater's going to be a cheater. Backbiters are going to be backbiters and gossipers are going to be gossipers. But it will not, what? Prosper. That's why I often say if you can just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, victory shall be yours. Jesus teaches us in Luke 10 and 19. Jesus' words says, see, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's why David can say in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. We have authority over the enemy. But look at verse 14 before I move on. I'm teaching this morning. Is that all right? He says, Because he has loved me, says the Lord, this is the Lord talking, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. So these verses are said in the first person as God speaks promise and blessings over his people. He speaks specifically over those who set their love upon him. It has been wonderfully noted that the last words of this psalm are not spoken by God's people, but to God's people. So what is the criteria for the protection and the covering of God is that we love God and that we are his people. That's why every Sunday when we start church, we start with Psalms 100. That talks about that we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. That we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise. But we must not forget the first part. We belong to him. He is Lord. I saw that movie this week, The Forge. It was an excellent movie. I'm glad that our men and our young men are going to go and see that movie. And I really actually encourage everyone who's able to see that movie. I don't typically do that, but let me tell you why I'm saying that today. Because that movie talks about how it is so important that you love God. I, what I loved about that movie is it really focused on discipleship. And a lot of times we do focus on evangelism, and we're getting ready to go into a season of evangelism. It's, it's harvest time, and you're going to hear about harvest and bringing in the souls and saving folks. But once we get people saved, we have to teach them 
help me Sunday school teachers, to observe all things. And I felt like this movie really talked about the importance of discipleship. Because you cannot make people follow God out of fear. You cannot make people follow God out of, out of manipulation and, and all these different things. That'll last for about five minutes. But when they start loving God with their whole heart, with their whole soul, and with their whole mind, God will correct whatever behavior that needs to be corrected. So the psalmist says, if you love me, and if you set your affections on me, and not on everything else and everybody else, I will deliver you. Our strength is in our position in Christ. That's what gives us victory over our enemies. We have authority over the enemy. We're covered. The next thing we see in the text, verse 15 in particular, we have the privilege to call on the name of the Lord. Talking about what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Psalmist says, verse 15, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. In trying times, it's important not just, uh, it's important to know who I should say to call for help. It's good to know that we have angels watching over us. It's comforting. But I'm so much more grateful that God is watching over me. Whatever happens, nothing will happen that God does not know about. Whatever situation we face, it did not come as a surprise to God. It may have come as a surprise to us, but it's not a surprise to God. God invites us to call on him. He says, call upon me and I will answer. Psalm 50 and 15, Psalm 50 and 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble. And I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. Now, the problem with quoting that text all the time is that sometimes we only call on God in the day of trouble. And when all is going well, we don't have much to say to him. We had a seven-hour prayer here not too long ago. And I, I, will be the, I will tell you, I said, Lord, what am I going to say for seven hours? And I'm the pastor. But that time went so fast because I did not realize that I needed time to talk to him. I needed to block out everything, every phone call, every critical comment, every administrative duty, every worry about the budget, and stop and say, God, I just love you for who you are. For what you've done, can I encourage you, don't just call him when you're in trouble. Don't just call. He don't, he's like everybody else. And nobody wants to just hear from you when you're in trouble. You know those people, that as soon as you see that number on your phone, you're like, oh, my God. What do they want now? You don't want God in heaven talking about here he go again. Here she, what they want now. But you want to call on him when it's not just the day of trouble. Sometimes we have to stop talking to one another and start talking to God. Sometimes we got to stop talking to one another and start talking to God. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. But here's the second part that I love. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit and oh, what needless pains we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Now, everything is everything. Everything is everything. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Calling upon God is not just calling upon God with what we want and what we need. But calling on God also means that we need to repent from what we've done. Pray about the things that we know he wants us not to do. 
the specific sins that are weighing us down and keeping us from relationship with God. Anybody praying for the preacher? Because if I just say, well, just pray and talk to God, but he also wants you to call upon him to help us to repent and be restored. Because we can have victory in every area, including over the sin in our lives. Let me give you some Bible, Isaiah 55. 6 through 7 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near, while we still have time. Let the wicked forsake his way. That means turn away. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. What does that mean? Get right before it's too late. See, some of us grew up at a time when they would just flat out tell you. <laughs> We, get, we can't want all the blessings from God, and we don't want the, the burdens or the responsibilities of being a Christian. We can't just want all the happiness and all the healing and all the, 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 the spiritual thrills. But at the same time, we don't want to take on the responsibility of walking up right before him. But thanks be unto God, when we forsake our ways and our thoughts, we can return to him. He will have mercy upon us, and he will forgive us. 1 John 1 and 9 tells us to confess our faults. Isn't it a blessing to know that God can forgive us and can pardon us when we call on him? We've got to call on him, though. 2 Timothy 2 and 19, I'm giving you a little more Bible on this. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. See, you and I, we don't know. Jesus said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. That's why when people tell me, well, pastor, why don't you do this? And pastor, why don't you put that one? And why don't you let the wheat and the tear grow grow together. He will judge. He will decide because he knows who belongs to him. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So what does that mean? If I am a Christian, then I should depart from iniquity. I should flee from evil. We want to call upon him when we need help on a test, but we don't want to call upon him when we need help with our sins, but we can have victory over all of it. We can have victory over the addictions of all kinds. We can have victory over self-righteousness. Everybody thinking that they're smarter than everybody and better than everybody. We can have victory over that. That's a sin. We can have victory over, over pride. We can have victory over lying. You know some folks, every time they open their mouth, you know they're lying. We can have victory over stealing. Some of us still haven't filed our taxes. <laughs> Who talk Holy Ghost? Trying to figure out a way to work it out. We can have victory over gossiping and backbiting, calling it a prayer request. I'm walking today. You praying? We can have victory over unforgiveness. We want victory, right? Well, then let's get victory over all of it. Let's get victory over holding grudges. Let's get victory over church hurt. Because your job hurts you and you go every day. Let's get victory over some real stuff, right? Let's get victory over pornography. Every time you turn on the television, why they got to do that to, just to show TV? I don't understand. But what they're doing is they're setting up, they're, they're putting all this stuff in our spirits and all this stuff in our minds. And if we're not careful, we'll cuss like a sailor. We'll do everything we see on television. But we have victory over the enemy. We are not them and they are not like us. We have victory over the enemy. We have the privilege to call on the name of the Lord, not just for what we want, 
but to help us to live right. We have victory. And we have the promise that God will see us through. I'm at point three. God now is speaking. He says, with a long life, I will satisfy him. And I will let him see my salvation. Here, God promises that we will see the salvation of the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament, when we hear the word salvation, it generally means deliverance. But in the New Testament, the word salvation is associated with Jesus Christ, God's only son who gave his life as a ransom for all of us. Jesus Christ, who demonstrated his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And surely, if God could raise Jesus from the dead, and he did, then he can handle our problems. And he has given us the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit to comfort us and lead us and guide us. And all we have to do is wait on the Lord because he has promised that he will see us through. Psalm 48 and 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Be still means to settle yourself. No means to trust confidently in what you already know about the character and the faithfulness of God. I am God means that we are not God and he is. We, there are no sub-gods. There are no junior gods. There are no demigods. There are no small gods. There are no gods on Monday. There are no gods on Tuesday. There are no gods on Wednesday. There are no little gods on Thursday. He is the only God. He is El Shaddai. He is the one who is the sufficient one. We are not God. We got to take our hands off of some things and trust in the covering of the God that we have. He says, lastly in this psalm, I will be with him. Oh God, we thank you that we are covered, that we have victory in our view, and that you promise that you will be with us. He promises the blessing of his presence. I will be with him in trouble. He promises us the blessing of his protection. I will deliver him. He promises us the blessing of his promotion. I will honor him. He promises us the blessing of his prosperity. With long life, I will satisfy him. He promises us the blessing of his preservation. And I will show him my salvation. You have victory in your view. You have authority over the enemy. You can call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord is going to allow you to live to see it. We have to claim that over our own lives and say, God, thank you that no matter what's going on, you're going to bring me through. For every mountain he's brought you over, for every river that he's seen you through, for everything that's happened in your life, for this, we give him thanks and praise. Hallelujah. 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 So walk tall because you have victory in your view. Thank you for tuning in to the New Mount Calvary podcast. We hope that you were blessed by today's message and inspired to take your next step in faith. Be sure to subscribe, share, and leave a review so others can discover the hope and the encouragement that we share. For more information about New Mount Calvary Baptist Church, our upcoming events, or how to get involved, visit our church website at www.newmountcalvary.org, or you can download our church app. Until next time, stay blessed and keep growing in Christ.